America's military campaign in Afghanistan is officially over and that's our one newsworthy focus this evening. Its last troops, diplomatic personnel and allies left Kabul airport on the 30th of August, a day before the deadline of 31st August. The US airlifted about 1.3 lakh people in 15 days, but soon after the Taliban stormed the Kabul International Airport, wielding American supplied weapons, equipment and uniforms and celebrated with gunfire and chants through the night. Good evening, my name is Anubha Bhonsle and this evening, what's happening now in Afghanistan and what comes next? Now, all countries except Russia have ended evacuations of their citizens, diplomatic staff, troops and Afghan nationals who worked for them. Now, remember, this doesn't mean everyone who wanted to leave Afghanistan was able to board a plane. Since August 28, the Taliban had sealed off Kabul's airport to most Afghans who were hoping to flee that country. Most countries, including the United States, have acknowledged that some of their citizens could be in very low hundreds in the case of Americans and thousands of Afghans who helped them over the years have been left behind. After the last American flight left Kabul, the head of the US Central Command said that even if they stayed for another 10 days or so, they would not be able to evacuate everyone they wanted to help. India's evacuations have also ended, although an unknown number of Indians remain scattered across Afghanistan with no clarity on if and when they will be able to leave that country. The airspace above Afghanistan is now termed uncontrolled. This means that there is no clarity on if and when commercial flights will operate to, from or even over that country, or whether the Taliban will honor its commitment and allow foreign nationals and Afghans who have the requisite travel authorizations to safely leave that country. Now, as of now, in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan, long lines can be seen crowding ATMs roughly 24-7 in the city of Kabul. Banks are not functioning at capacity. Workers at irrigation projects and dams, many of them, remember, were built by US, India and some of the other donor countries, have either left that country or are simply not coming to work. There is an acute shortage of drinking water. There has been waves of severe drought that has nearly destroyed about 40% of all crops. The result of this, one in three Afghans is going hungry. More than half a million Afghans have been displaced since January of this year. So what next? What happens now that Afghanistan has once again completed a familiar cycle of violence and upheaval? Well, the Taliban have yet to figure out how they want to run that country. Right now, they are at a stage where they've had to ask Turkey to handle logistics at the Kabul airport, which remember they've had control over for one day. Most countries, including the United States and India, are going with a wait and watch approach. In the last two days, the Taliban has made about three overtures towards India, mentioning economic ties. Taliban fighters also visited the Salma Dam. It's also known as the India-Afghanistan Friendship Dam. Remember, it's the same one they attacked in the first week of August. New Delhi has not acknowledged these overtures, nor really issued a substantial statement on the situation in Afghanistan currently. Meanwhile, America, which as of yesterday has no diplomatic presence in Afghanistan, is still to figure out what the contours of this new relationship will be with the very same fundamentalists it toppled or wanted to in 2001, while also contending with the fact that Al-Qaeda is still in 15 provinces in Afghanistan, despite there being a 20 year old long war to eliminate them, that ISIS Khorasan, which considers both the US and the Taliban as its enemies, claimed responsibility for the August 26 suicide bombing outside Kabul airport that, remember, killed at least 169 Afghans and 13 US troops. 
and the US, well, it responded with drone strikes, retaliatory and preemptive, that among others led to the death of at least seven children. And with that, we are back to square one. This is Newsworthy. My name is Anupa Bhosli and our aim really is to unpack, break down one important newsworthy story every day. If this has been useful, worthy of your time and attention, do consider making a contribution to help Newsworthy do more such work. The link for that is in the bio. If you're catching this on Instagram, it is in the description if you're watching us on YouTube. We'll see you again very soon.